You're listening to the Productive Muslim Podcast, Season 1, Episode 7. Assalamu alaikum and welcome to the Productive Muslim Podcast, the weekly podcast where we help you live a productive lifestyle so that you can be successful in this life and the hereafter. Assalamu alaikum, productive Muslims. Welcome to the show. I'm your host, Mifra Maruf, and in this episode, we will be speaking about books. So things such as how to be able to start the habit of reading books into our life. Why is it so important to start this habit? What kind of benefits we will find as a result of implementing this habit? All this we'll be discussing with our guest, Brother Kai Whiting. So Kai is our Productive Muslim Academy Director and also the founder of a review site called Quake Books. So he has many insights to share on this topic, especially being an avid reader himself. So if you're struggling to implement a habit of reading, or even if you're not that convinced about the importance of reading, then I suggest you check out this episode. There are a lot of practical takeaways. After you finish this episode, do let me know what you think about it and what book you're planning to read by heading over to the Productive Muslim website. And there you'll be able to find out the show notes for this episode, along with all other episodes which we have have released for this podcast. This show is sponsored by the Productive Muslim Academy, an online platform built for serious and committed individuals like yourself who want to improve themselves. I'm a member myself and I must say this place is a goldmine of knowledge with unlimited access to personal development courses by experts and the best thing about it is that it's all faith-based, meaning it combines between religious teachings and the best of modern personal development. It also contains access to a private Facebook group where you can network with like-minded individuals, a book club to encourage you to read regularly, exclusive webinars and more. Plus, there's a 30-day money-back guarantee. So that means if you don't like it, you can request a refund, no questions asked. So give it a try by heading over to ProductiveMuslimAcademy.com and take your life to another level. Assalamu alaikum, Kai. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much for having me. It's a pleasure to be here, Mifra. It's a pleasure to have you on. So first of all, I want you to give an introduction to our audience to just know who you are. Okay, who I am. I'm the director of the Productive Muslim Academy. So you may not know me if you've only gone on ProductiveMuslim.com. I run the book club for the Productive Muslim Academy and I'm the founder of Quaybooks.net. There's a little bit of my professional background. I'm a reaver. I'm from the UK originally, but I currently live in Portugal. And I enjoy a lot of things like apart from reading, I do also enjoy YouTube. I do enjoy podcasts. So although I will be talking about reading, I'm not just a crazy guy who only reads. So I would like to get into that about how you can also be a Muslim or a Muslim who reads, but doesn't spend the whole life reading. I think yeah. it's important to say that. Yeah. So so the reason why I wanted to have you on the show today was just pretty much to ask about your reading because I'm 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 aware that one of the things I found out when I was researching about you well <laughs> doing some online research you can say and I found out that you read 60 books last year so it's like wow do people even read 60 books in a year so I mean so that just brought up all these questions for me and to just find out why do you read books I read books because it actually makes me more productive. I know that's really cliched for the Productive Muslim podcast, but it's actually true. I save more time by reading than I spend reading. And let me just unpack that a little bit. So you say, for example, when you're right in saying I had read 60 books last year, how on earth did I find the time? I stopped making the same mistake over and over again. I became more efficient and effective at what I was able to do. I was able to develop myself personally and professionally, emotional intelligence being what I'm still working on. And by by not making the same mistake over and over and over again, I was actually faster, more efficient, less stressed, less irritated. And that really facilitated my learning. There was a purpose behind that. And so you can read 60 books a year if you know why you're reading. If you want to learn about how to run a podcast, then maybe there's a book for you. It may also be that you should watch a YouTube video um, or listen to other podcasters. But if you can really you know, work your craft, you'll save so much time. And so people think, I don't have time to read. It's kind of like, then you don't have time to improve. Then you don't have time to stop making the same mistake over and over. And you don't have time to get the noise out of your head because a lot of people think they don't have time. What they don't have is, they don't, is attention. 
It's not a time management issue. It really is an attention issue. When I say I don't have time, what I mean yeah. is I don't have attention or I'm too tired to do something because I have time, but I prefer to go to bed right now because I'm exhausted, for example. Okay. So, so my question is if you read books in order to get certain information out of it, then why not get information on blogs or book summaries or YouTube videos? I mean, why must it be through reading books, especially with, you know, today's technology? We have countless courses and all these all these materials out there that you can get what you can get from a book in a faster time, you can say. So I can watch exactly. a one-hour video about a book summary as opposed to reading that book for 17 hours. It might take me, for example. Uh, that's, that's absolutely correct, and that's a valid argument. I would say, first of all, it's like anything. The more you read, the faster you read. So, yeah, in the beginning, you're going to read really slow. But in the beginning, you spoke really slow when you were two years old. You only did a few words. And by the time you were 20, you were able to hold a conversation without thinking about it. I don't speed read. I don't like speed reading. Yeah. It's not a mechanism that I actually use because I, I, I don't, particularly for my own personal development, I'm not saying I never speed read to get to a part of the text that I know really well, I just want to check. But in terms of learning, I don't speed read. I just learn to read quickly through practice, like anything else, like walking, okay. talking. So if you say it takes me 17 hours, I'd say, yeah, it does now. If you read a book every week for a year, it would take you half that time. Okay, so I mean, besides besides the time that it takes you to read read books, I mean, what is that immediate impact that it has on your life? Because I mean, even if say you know it's nice to be able to speed read, but then what impact is it going to have on your life that would make it more productive? Yeah, so you said and rightly so that I could watch a video for an hour. Yeah, the thing is, watching a video is actually a very passive exercise unless I'm taking notes. All right. And so, uh, and it's and it's only one hour. When I'm reading, if I'm pretty, if I'm really into what I'm reading, I could read for an hour and a half. I could read for two hours and really get. If I really need to learn something, then I'm really immersed. And then I get into something called flow, which is a psychological state of being where I can really assimilate the information much quicker. Um, I mean, it's not necessarily the place to 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 look up flow, but it's to put yourself in a position where you really can control control your mind and get where you want to go with what, you, with what you're reading. The thing about having a YouTube um, video is that often you're sitting there on your internet and then you're opening another tab and another tab. And another anyway, tab and another video. And another tab and you're not actually listening to what has been said. Yeah. So there's nothing wrong or inherently wrong with listening to a podcast or watching a YouTube video. It it's really it doesn't give you that in-depth richness, though, that a book would give you. It doesn't give you the context. Podcasts are very good, but you don't have... In one hour, how much context can you get about a person's life? You can only skim it. Whereas if you read the person's autobiography, then, okay, it's, it's how they see their own life. So it may not be completely accurate, but you can see much more about the details behind why they're successful. And mm. the podcast, I feel that they, they focus on the overnight success. This person's successful, and we only get to the point where they are now successful. If I read an autobiography, I've got there when they weren't successful, when they felt really miserable, when they really struggled, and I really understand their journey in a much better way. And you can, I can only get that through reading. Okay, so it's pretty just, pretty much what, what you're saying is that reading allows you to strengthen your attention span and also it correct. gives you in-depth knowledge of a particular um, knowledge that you, you want to gain. That's correct. All right, all right. So, uh, I mean, what if what if you don't like reading? That's a very good question. And I use it as part of if you don't like praying. What happens if you have your five you know, your five prayers. It's funny, I, I can't, I don't like praying. I'm not going to pray. I'm very fortunate that I like praying, but say I didn't. Hmm. Well, in Ramadan, I actually managed to pray a lot more than I would, even I would like sometimes because my legs get really tired standing up. Yeah. You know, when you've got to work all day and then you're standing up. But then you've realized that you've gone through the whole Quran. You have no idea how that happened. You had no idea how you managed to pray that much, but your spirituality just went up a notch. Like you actually accelerated your learning and growth with Allah. And you really become more dynamic. Uh, if you're very, care you know, if you're very careful, then you then take what you learn in Ramadan and you run with it the next you know, lunar year. Mm -hmm. So if you don't like reading, it's a case of you just you do it because you don't. It's not the pro it's not what you actually read. Or it's not the process that you like. It's the benefit you get. So I don't like personally standing up for an hour and a half praying because I don't like standing up very much. But I really like the connection to Allah. Yeah, and that's why I pray. It's not, it's not the mechanism per se of praying, the actual movement. It's, it's the... What you're going to get out immediate, of it. Exactly. The, the love of Allah that, that drives me. So I would say the same thing. If you're reading and say, I don't like reading, don't think about the process. 
think about what you're trying to achieve. Okay, so if if say a person is convinced, okay, I need to start reading. Reading is really important, but they're starting from zero books. How how does one um, a person like that actually get started? I mean, what are some practical ways that they can implement reading into their life without it feeling like they're just overwhelmed by it? Yeah. I'm going to say when you say zero books that they can read. So I'm assuming zero books is in terms of a hobby. So I would say that the problem they had is with reading is probably because they went to school and they were forced to read something they didn't like yeah. for no reason. And there's nothing worse than reading a book for no reason other than to pass an exam. I can't think of a worse reason to read. It is absolutely pointless. I, I, I read, for example, Romeo and Juliet just because someone told me to. That's not conducive to learning or growth. I read Othello back in English class. I didn't understand Did like it, it though. <laughs> exactly. So, so people tend to have this memory. And so I, I asked them, find some, something or somebody you really, really admire or really like and read about them. Mm-hmm. Because unless you love it, you're never going to read. And that's how you get started. You get started with, with, with a Something with that a love. interests you. Exactly. A friend of mine started on Elon Musk. Uh, he was like, I can't stand reading. I said, well, who do you like? He said, I like Elon Musk. I was like, well, read the biography of Elon Musk. This guy now reads a book a week because wow. he said, I, I, I fell in love with reading because I understood how Elon Musk worked yeah. and I really liked Elon Musk. Now, I didn't like him so much to read about him every week, but he was really intrigued about how that person thinks. Yeah. And for example, if you say, well, I, re- I find it really hard to read the Quran. I don't find it really hard to read the Quran. That's why I listen to it. It's actually one of the few things I, I prefer to listen to. So what I would do is I would read a book on Islam that I really appreciate. And one of them would be, you know, productive Muslim book that really got me into thinking about productivity and growth. So if yeah. you say, I really struggle with the Quran, okay, that's fine. Listen to it and find a way to complete the Quran in your life, you know, make sure it's in your life. So take the first step um, towards the first step. reading. Okay, so would that uh, would this method actually work, say, if a person takes a first step by reading a fiction book? Because I know that you, you've you been mentioning autobiographies and non-fiction books, but say if they just got out like a fiction series. Absolutely. Would that serve I the mean, same purpose? Yeah, whatever you – I think it's actually better to – and I'm glad you asked that question. It's actually better for a lot of people to start on a fiction book. Like I've known people who started on The Alchemist and really loved it. So – if you really like a fiction book or, you, you know, you really like a certain author, you, I think you might like, I know some people start on Stephen King. Now, I'm not a Stephen King fan by, by any means, but if he gets you reading, and a lot, excellent. That's mm. exactly what that purpose is. And sometimes, you know, I think a book club is really helpful. That's why we run one at the Productive Muslim Academy, which is exclusive to members, because it's not the reading that they like, it's the community. It's like, Being oh, Being able to discuss with other yeah. people. Exactly. On the Facebook group yesterday, I was like, watch out for you old guys. And I was like, I was embarrassed because they were beating me. You know, I was like, yeah. how is that possible? So but they got really into it about which chapter they're on and what they're learning and how they've put it into practice. And that's what they needed. They, people have written to me and said, it's not, I don't read because I like reading. I like the community feel. So if you don't like reading, find someone to read with, have a community feel. I'm not saying that you should necessarily join our book club. You may yeah. not want to. But there's Goodreads, for example. Goodreads has uh, book clubs, and there are ones in your local area. Yeah. It's very difficult not to find them. Yeah, there's also other other ways to achieve that. Like, for example, when, when I read a book, I'll go and discuss that with my husband, and he'd also kind of d- describe what books he's reading. So it's like it serves as a food for conversation pretty much. Exactly. You know, I think reading with your husband is an excellent idea because it, it shows that you're interested in growth and yeah. you're interested in, in, in self-development and you're interested in, in putting forward, you know, ideas in your marriage. And, and I guess being uncomfortable with certain ideas and discussing them, I'm sure you've had like, oh, why do you think that? And you actually learn a lot from someone in a non-threatening, like some sort of argument like where you're trying to defend something for yeah. your own personal benefit. It's really like, well, what do you think about this? And really, what should I think about this? And I think that a book... It's an interesting insight into the world. We don't have to agree with the author, mm. but it's very, it's an excellent as, as, a, as a Muslim, for example, to know what non Muslims think as how we ever get our message across to them. If we have no bridge and they, they don't, I don't want to use the word they and us, but the non Muslim world at the moment, unfortunately, doesn't want to reach out to us particularly. So I feel that it's up for us to reach out to them in a very positive way. And that can start by saying, actually, I did read this book. I did read, for example, Obstacle is the Way by Ryan Holiday. I didn't agree with, you know, everything, but I really like the book. So I, I can have that conversation with non-Muslims. I can talk to, say, reverts about the productive Muslim book. Because I say, they ask me, a lot of reverts ask me, which book should I start with? And I said, the productive Muslim book. 
yes. it is so practical. Yeah. And they, they, they're like, I don't understand, you know, who our prophet is, peace be upon him. I'm really confused. I'm like, don't start there. Start with something that is practical that you can put into practice so that it becomes part of your life. Yeah. And then when it's part of your life, then by all means, I'll give you more quote unquote appropriate books. It's really about finding that first step finding that one book, finding that one find person that one to have that conversation with. Mm. So, uh, you know, going back to your point that you mentioned about how books have allowed you to um, exercise your attention span, I mean, how how has that impacted your other areas of your life? <sighs> wow, what a question. That's such an excellent question. It's been profound. It's been exponential growth in so many areas because I didn't realise that att- attention is a, is a commodity now that's undervalued. We talk about multitasking. Multitasking is such a false concept, which should only be linked to computers, which it was back in the 1960s. It was about computers multitasking. We use it today to show that we're efficient, and that's not true. And actually, by focusing and learning to focus on one thing at one time, I had exponential abilities to to do more things, to get more things done in a quicker way, with a better attitude because I don't feel stressed. Wow. So that then felt that then bled into other parts of my life, professional and personal, yeah. uh, professional re- relationships with people, reaching out to them because books give me a lot of um, credibility. I can say, "Oh, I read your book," and give them feedback, and then then I'm having dinner with famous people. And I was like, "How does this happen?" Because I by reading their book, I invited myself into their life, and by commenting on. How, I, how it made me feel. They're like, okay, you actually know me. So people, they, people have said to me, famous people, you actually, I feel that like you actually know me. I'm like, well, I read your book. Yeah. So it's, it's given me social capital, which I think is the, the most underrated capital. Yeah. So a lot of business people will say, I need to start up a business. I'm like, you know what you should do first? Enhance your social capital. Enhance your connections yeah. and your network. And you can do that through reading. All you right. want to know how to, to start up a, big, a business? Read a book by a person who has started up a business follow in their footsteps, copy their system, not 100%, but if they know how to start up a business, then they're a good person to learn from. And I think sometimes we read for the sake of it because we think we should, and that's a really poor way of learning because you have no nothing to latch onto, nothing to connect your ideas to. So if you want to launch a business, I often say so you're, you're saying UK, read, read with a purpose, so before, before you absolutely. read, have a, have a purpose before you open a book. Yeah, it, it doesn't make not, sense. Even not if it's just a, because even if it's a Kai is one. reading that book. No, it's really, unless it's the book, unless it's the book club. <laughs> but unless it's the book club, yeah, that would be really, it would be counterproductive in many ways. Yeah. So, for example, if I wanted to start a business and I'm based in the UK, I would probably pick Richard Branson. Now, if I'm based in the US, I would pick a US entrepreneur because there are nuances. If, I, if I'm a Muslim and I particularly want halal income, there are, there are books out there. Again, I would start with productive Muslim and, 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 and ask myself, am I being personally productive? Because if I'm not personally productive, I'm not going to be professionally productive. Yeah. So it kind of like it's, it's, it's a whole journey of discovery, really, reading books. Yeah. That's interesting. You know, the point that you mentioned about how being able to have longer span of attention has helped you focus more on your professional life, your personal life, and get things done with that stress. It kind of r- reminds me of this uh, book uh, called Deep Work by Cal Newport and how he mm-hmm. was saying about we we have so much anxiety within us because of all these social networks and all these different things that we're a part of, but we don't really yes. need to be a part of. And our phones and ev- everything's just kind of um, grabbing a part of our attention. So by being able to train our mind to single focus and not multitask, we're in turn being able to exercise superpowers. He he calls it superpowers. Absolutely. And, it's absolutely correct. Yeah. And um, there was also another another book that co- complemented that idea. And um, it was the book was called The Shallows. And that book yes. spoke about how when, when, when we have all these pieces of information coming at us, we're not learning as effectively as when we're silencing our mind when we're reading. Because when we're reading, we're kind of just like just doing one thing. Absolutely. And that kind of focus makes us focus. And it's quite interesting to see how that had an impact on, uh, on, your, on your life, especially coming from someone who's been reading a lot. Because for me, that's, some, that's an idea that's very theoretical because I read that idea, but I'm not able to practice it as much. But for you, I see that you're already in a higher level in terms of reading. So that was interesting. I think you do. I think you do practice it, but maybe you're not conscious of it because part of my journey was to, because it's, I, I run a 
book club and I, um, I have a book review website is to understand the process. You probably didn't notice it because I, I made sure I was conscious of it because it's part of my you know, quote unquote brand. It's part of who I am. It's become part of my DNA. But I often think about our, our, our prophet, peace be upon him. If he had been multitasking when Allah was trying to talk to him, we would not have a faith. <laughs> like The reason why we have a faith or a religion, whatever the, where people would like to call it, is because our prophet, Peter Poynton, was able to focus at that moment. It's not saying we should cl close ourselves away. Although Carl Newport people would say that he says, talk about closing yourself away. He's saying yeah. for a specific amount of time to get a certain job done. So, for example, when, um, I like to get a lot of work done just before Fajr, like I woke up this morning because it's quiet. There's no distractions. Other people are asleep like in my time zone. So it's, about, it's not about shutting yourself away. It's about making sure that that, you know, following you know, our prophet's example, like when did he make most of his, you know, most of his the work that he needed done? When did it get done? At what time of the day? And in Islam, it's very, we're very fortunate that we have a break of five to focus five pray. different times. I would say, yeah. which in exactly, and the Western world doesn't yeah. have that. They have twenty four seven. But we can actually say, I will do this after Asr. I will do this before Fajr. If you're not a Muslim, you have no ability to do that. That's such a blessing. It's unbelievable because you say, before Fajr, I'm going to get this work done. Between Fajr and this time, I'm going to get this done. And we have that ability. And Allah, knowing that we are not multitasking robots or computer operating systems, has actually given us the perfect example. So if you know, for example, that after Isha, you're terrible at like, concentrating, then don't concentrate. Watch, your, watch your, you know, your Netflix at that point. If you know that your best work is between Fajr and, and lunchtime, then make sure that between Fajr and lunchtime, right. you're working. You've got that perfect structure that other, seriously, we should be the envy of the Western world. Other people don't have that. So I get a lot of my reading done early in the morning or late at night because I find in the afternoon is the best time for me to work. So it's about structuring. All right. So speak to me about structure, like as in how do, how do you structure your time with regards to reading? Again, just following, following the natural rhythms of the day and – following the natural prayer cycle so um with you again people say well, it's harder in the summer yeah it's hard in the summer you have to have a you know like a siesta i guess <laughs> during the day but i said okay i know that i'm best for example when i was living in colombia i was waking up at like three in the morning to read before fudge because that's something that i really really valued so it's about structuring right. when is the best time for you according to the natural rhythm of the day which thankfully for muslims is very clear we are very very, very clear when the natural rhythm of the day starts and stops, even if you have major seasonal changes, then, then we can, you can focus because you're saying, I'm not forcing myself to read all the time. I'm not locking myself away. I didn't read 60 books in a year by locking myself away. I did it by strategically picking the best times for me to read, which was just before work because my brain, although it, it was awake, it wasn't able yeah. to work, quote unquote, but it was able to read and assimilate. And before I went to bed, I read. So it was basically that continu continuity between sleeping and waking. So then my brain was like, ah, oh, yes, this is where you were reading last night. So I used to read, you know, I still do actually did last night, read in the, in the evening just before bed and then read in the morning. So the How long is that? How long do I read? Yeah. Um, yesterday was like half an hour before bed. Today was half an hour in the morning. And then so is I, that your aim that you have? So before you go to work half an hour, before you go to bed half an hour? Yeah. The continuity right. is really helpful. People underrate yeah. the, the need to wake up and have something uh, already in your mind understood. And uh, when you've got writer's block, because I also coach writers, as you, you actually know, I, you say to them, make sure that you write something half written so that when you wake up the next day, you already know what you're going to write because people go, oh, no, I need to finish this idea. They wake up the next day, then they have writer's block. I'm like, no, half finish the idea, half finish it. So that when you wake up the next day, you already know what you're going to write because you half finished it. I'm not saying half written or half a sentence. I'm just saying don't complete the idea if writing yeah. a block is a, is a problem for you. So it's the same as reading. It's like that process of, of slowly getting into your day. And like, oh, but you must so read create a hours routine now. that optimizes on your best times of the day. For you personally, so my best yep. times are not your best times. Yeah. Uh, if you have children, it's going to change. Uh, maybe it's when the children are asleep. Yeah. Or when, yeah. or when you know, or maybe you can't particularly read with your eyes, so you have an audio book and you drive the children to school or you drive to work. A lot of people commute. I'm like, you have more time in the day to read than I do. You're commuting for an hour there and an hour back. It's two hours of reading. 
you don't need to use your eyes to read, you just need to engage your brain. So if you're an audio learner, then that's great. And if you're, if you're, if you're kinetic, like you have to move, then, then listen whilst cleaning. Like a lot of people clean their house and they say, oh, I need to, you know, I can't read, I need to move to learn. And like, good, then, then, then clean the house and, and listen to a podcast or listen to an audio yeah. book. Then you're learning and moving at the same time. So it's really about finding your strategy and, and making and it your strategy. own, not and trying being to copy. consistent. Exactly. Consistency is key. If you, if you don't read you know, for four days and you forgot what you read, then it's just a very slow process. All right. So, I mean, my final question I want to ask you uh, before we wrap up is like, so you have a reading schedule, you have a way that you're reading and the way that you approach how you're going to read a book. I mean, by, by interest, what's, what's going to benefit you the most? So now my question is, how do you complete that book in a way that it brings you the most benefit? Because people have all sorts of a- approach on how they read a book. I mean, some people might read cover to cover and then they might read it again, but then others may not. So, I mean, how do you go about with that? How do you, get, how do you make the most out of your reading time? In the beginning, I used to read cover to cover because I think it's good yeah. to get into that practice. Um, but so then, this is this is actually for non-fiction books. I I, I just want to yeah, 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 clarify that. Fiction books is, I mean, <laughs> yeah, you'd read it to cover to cover. And, yeah. <laughs> That's a very good point, actually. Yes. So I used to read it from cover to cover because I wanted to get into the practice. But I tend to do uh, I pick a book and then now I then pick after that two more books or at least another book on the same subject so that whatever I missed in the first book, I'll get in the second. And that way I can actually, when I sometimes get to chapters, I skip them because I know what they're going to say or that's not longer relevant to me. So again, it's your purpose. If you get to a chapter, for example, I was reading a book on, um, on sales and they started talking about massive organizations. Well, I don't run a massive organization. So yeah. that chapter, although I, I mean, I fixed for it. I thought, well, this is actually very helpful to me because I don't run an organization with a hundred staff. So I don't need the database that they're talking about. I don't need the, the, those talks. Oh, that's interesting. So I just so you read what I needed. Sections. I skip, I skipped the section. I mean, you should skim, you know, skim read in the beginning and then go, I yeah. don't actually need this. That doesn't mean I will never need it. It means right now that information will be, I have no context. That's why I said that before. It's not just that content. It is context. Gary Vee says content is king. Context is, is God. Now, I don't like that expression. What he's trying to say is that without context, we have nothing to really gain. So if I'm not running that organization, then my read, reading it is just becoming for the sake of reading it like reading a fellow. What would be the point? I can't apply it. So that's what I'm saying. Pick a book either because you, you really like reading about somebody or because you really need to solve an issue now. Because if you need to solve an issue now, then you'll be reading and then you'll be acting and reacting to so the information. So can you give us an example of an issue that uh, you would use to read a book and then how would you go ahead with that? I, I just want to see, see it in action. A very, a very simple one. There was jab, jab, okay. jab, 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 right hook by Gary Vee yep. about what you do for social media. So I read the book, you know, I read the chapter on Facebook and I put it into practice on my Facebook page. I read okay, the chapter so what, on... So what was the purpose behind reading it? Like how did, how did you make out that purpose? <laughs> the purpose is, is a, basically this book is a very short book. It's a case study about how to do social media right and how to do social media wrong. And I realized I spent one year doing it all wrong really yeah. all wrong like there's ways of doing it and there's ways of not doing it so I, that was really shocking to me I was really sad to, to know that but then so I looked at the cases and go now I know why you know x y and z is happening and I was completely so you picked up that book uh with the idea that I want to improve in my social media yeah, marketing so then exactly. you p- picked up his book so that was your purpose that was my purpose I thought yeah. I was better than I was. But yes, my purpose yeah. is, this is not working. I have no idea why this is not working. Then I understood, yeah. this is why I said, this is why I save time. So instead of spending the next five years putting out a message which is completely wrong, not because I wanted to, because I just didn't know, because of my own ignorance, now I'm not going to do that anymore. So I actually can do, use social media less, but I can use it in a more effective way so I can spend less time on social media, which is a big thumbs up mm, for me. I see. And, and spend more time doing other things like spend time with my family. Before I'd be like, oh, it's about quantity, it's about getting the message across, it's about, it's actually not true. You have to do that, for, you know, you have to do some analysis and see when is the best time to post. But once you know that, you can just trigger the two, the two messages you need that week. Do you know how much time that saves? Like hours, because it's back to the All tab right. thing. So um, if I use that same approach, like say, for example, as a student or something, I'd be like, I'm not I'm not doing so well in my studies right now or I want to be a student who's um going to get like a really high GPA so I'm going to go 
pick up a book on how I can be a very successful student. And so that would lead me to pick up a book on that topic, like the best book on that topic. Absolutely. And then I read through that um, with my problem, my purpose in my mind, and then take it from there. That's correct. I mean, I wouldn't necessarily be that person, but I would, as a student, read a book on learning how to learn. How do I learn? So that every subsequent book I read, or I would read two or three books on the subject, every subsequent book I read. Okay, so you read a few subjects on that problem. Yeah, because otherwise you might get, firstly, when you first start, you you pick, sometimes you pick the wrong books. And it's good to have one or at least two so that you can compare because somebody, just because somebody says something doesn't mean it's right. But when you start to see, when you start to see, see the pattern, you go, actually, I know this is not true. If I didn't read, I wouldn't know. And the problem with going on Google and like reading random articles, how do you know that's actually true if you've got no context? That's a really yeah. dangerous thing. How do you know someone isn't just writing up an article in order to fill in the words and they certain types of ad- advice that they themselves haven't tried? And I think that's very dangerous. Oh, yeah, absolutely. It, yeah. It, it's, and people don't realize how easy, once you know how to write an article, you can just write it and how many ghostwriters there You can just say are. anything, like top, yeah. top 10 tips on how to earn money and the person who's writing that article has not even made one cent or maybe absolutely. they're on minus. Absolutely, and yeah. there's a lot of there's a lot of that. So there's a lot it, of that out there. Absolutely, and it's really painful to watch people waste a lot of time reading that kind of stuff. Mm, that's true. So pretty much by reading multiple books on a particular topic, you're able to pick out what will work and what is just like fluff, pretty much. As long as you put it into action, because people say yeah. knowledge, knowledge is power. That's a lie. Knowledge is not power. Knowledge is knowledge. Knowledge. It's not power unless you convert it into action. The minute you convert the knowledge you have, which is correct knowledge because you've, you've basically created your own books, then you act and you start to see results, that's power. If you just yeah. have knowledge, you sit in your head and people go, for example, how, I had a question recently, how do I stop being lazy? You just choose to stop being lazy and do something. You can't just choose by thinking about it. How do I run my own business? Well, Read a lot about how business will run. Read and make sure you know about it because you're going to make a lot of mistakes along the way if you, if you don't. And and find credible sources of information and, yeah. and follow that. All right. Fantastic. That's some really useful insights that you've given us about reading. Is there anything else that you want to mention before we wrap up that you didn't get to mention throughout the interview? Uh, yes. Just uh, So if you do want information about the, the book club, that we run at Productive Muslim Academy, then please, re- then please reach us at academy at productivemuslim.com. Uh, your email may or may not get forwarded to me. If it's a very specific question, I'm happy to answer it. Otherwise, my team will answer it for you. Uh, it is free for members. If you're already a member in the Academy and you haven't used it, then you should. We have yeah. a worksheet every week and then for four weeks. Then we have a podcast recording at the end. So we bring everyone in together in the, at the moment in the Facebook group. So that, that's how that works. And it's a book a month, so it's not particularly stressful. If you're not sure which book to read, then you have cratebooks.net, which is my book review site. And that will go, there's about 60 books on there. So that's enough for most people for a few years. You're bound to find so one. You're bound to find something. Yeah. And if you haven't got the Productive Wisdom book yet, absolutely can't recommend it enough. It's amazing. And if you're a reader, it's the one for you. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much for coming on the show. We hope to see you again soon. Thank you very much for having me. So there you have it, our episode on reading books. I hope you took away many insights on this. One of the things that I took away was the point about reading multiple books on a particular topic. That way you can be able to get the bigger picture on a goal as opposed to just one way on how to achieve it. I'm interested to know what you took away from this episode and what book that you're planning to read. Please let me know by heading over to our show notes Also, Brother Kai has a special offer for podcast listeners. So he said that he will be sending out worksheets from the Productive Muslim Academy Book Club. So this is a book club which is a part of the paid membership, but he'll be offering out worksheets free if you leave a review for this podcast by heading over to iTunes or Stitcher Radio and then taking a screenshot of that review and sending it over to Kai, that's K-A-I, at ProductiveMuslim.com. So again, head over to ProductiveMuslimPodcast.com and then you'll find the links to iTunes or Stitcher Radio. Leave a review there. Take a screenshot of your review and send it over to Kai, K-A-I at ProductiveMuslim.com. You will receive worksheets from the book club. 
So I hope you enjoyed this episode. Till next time, remember, be sincere and work hard.